Ninja. I believe everybody on their birthdays likes to reminisce about some childhood parties, toys, or movies that they remember. Maybe it could have been a movie about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles freaking them out as a kid and their horrible, horrible animatronic faces. Oh, I'm 19 today. Now that I'm 19, there's nothing that really scares me anymore. This is something you can't handle, dude. Yeah, okay. Oh, f oh, f oh, my God. Oh, oh my God. Uh, oh, f oh, sh oh, my God. <laughs> But for some reason, while watching this movie as a kid, and then re-watching it now, just to make this video, I still got the heebie-jeebies. I went digging through my huge collection of DVDs to look for a movie I remember creeping me out so much as a kid. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3. Where are 1 and 2, you may ask? I don't f know. <laughs> Everybody's favorite giant turtles travel through time and space to feudal Japan to rescue their plucky sidekick, April. Haha. <laughs> when a golden sword accidentally causes her to switch places with a rebellious samurai. This thing was released on March 19th, 1993. Hey, happy birthday to you too, buddy. How old are you turning, 28? <laughs> Nobody cares. The late 80s to early 90s was all about those damn turtles, man. You couldn't get enough of them. Then again, I am only 19 and have no clue what life was like back then, but I mean, they're still prevalent now. Toys, video games, comics, and that animated show that looks like they were stung in the face by a bee. And now this. When's it gonna stop? This movie is garbage. In the 90s, it was made especially for kids after the previous two were very dark and mellow, but it's still a sh show. I remember this movie being very disturbing and creepy at times. Why I still watched it as a kid? I don't know. I think it was a movie that my parents put on to get me to sit the f down. Well, happy birthday to the Ninja Turtles. Let's see what you have in store for us. So we start off the movie with a pretty decent shot of a horse chase that introduces absolutely nothing to us. Next we're introduced to the turtles of the movie and their emotionless faces. Except for Mikey up there who looks like he shot on the rug and got away with it. What is that? That's the most disgusting, most horrifying thing ever. I was actually curious as to why we only see Splinter in like half shots where it's only his upper body. And doing research, I found out that his animatronic and his little, I guess, costume that it was supposed to be, it wasn't finished. It ended up just being a puppet. So that's why he's always halfway in a window or they just show his face. We then now get introduced to April, who comes back from the flea market. <laughs> hey guys! How's it going? Hi. Gives all the turtles gifts that she got and brings out this scepter that she found, which she believes is also from ancient Japan. And for Splinter, hmm. where is he anyway? Cool. Uh, he's doing rat stuff. Found this, uh... Actually, I don't really know what it is. Next, we're thrown back into Japan uh, to the soldiers that we saw from the beginning, from the pointless scene at the beginning, my, I point out. Um, why was he running away? Who are these people? Um, what, wh where are we in time right now? Um, if you're looking for the answers for these questions, I, the, the door is right over there. Hell yes, nothing screams ancient Japan than a pirate cowboy. Is he a pirate or is he a cowboy? The crew that shows up behind him shows us that he's probably a, a pirate. But later in the movie, cowboy music starts playing when he comes on screen. I mean, he's British, so that's a good factor that he's a pirate. He also looks disgusting which probably is another factor that he's a pirate. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Is Your Friend a Pirate or Not? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's episode of Is Your Friend a Pirate or Not? The two questions we're going to be asking today are Does he look like shit? And is he British? Unfortunately, if you answered yes to either one of those, your friend is a pirate. We 
gonna learn this till later on in the movie, so I'm just gonna cut to the chase. The scepter that April is holding is like a time machine, but there's only one that's ever been made. This is the one. This is the same. The one that she's holding is the same one that the dude's holding in Japan, but he's from the past. And apparently, if at two points in time, two people hold the staff at the same time, they get transported to where they are in time. So it's basically a one-way time machine. You don't know where it's going to end up, where, where, where you're going to be. So it's just like a blind guess at a time machine. I, I, I don't know. Sorry? Okay, I took Spanish in high school. I took Spanish in high school. Anyone who's anyone knows you are not in Mexico. There are samurai soldiers completely surrounding you. Yes, there's pirates behind you, but you are clearly in ancient Japan. There is no doubt anyone would know if they're in this situation. Hey, I'm in Japan. I don't understand any of these people. Spanish is not going to help me in this situation. April here is a dunce. Let's see here. Subtract the cosine from the inverted integer, then I can take the flangular and put that here. Oh, that's it. Of course. What 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 is it with 90s movies? Not just 90s movies, but the past movies thinking you can just do anything known to mankind on any type of technology. You always see that that guy with a huge box and a keyboard just I think I swallowed a frog. I hope it wasn't an ancestor. Leo, that's um that's, that's not how it works. I love how back then when they made the animatronics for the faces, they couldn't make the eyes fully close. So when Mikey gets thrown onto the thing, he just looks like he's peeking, like, what's going on out there, huh? Okay, let's just jump ahead of it because it's gonna get too long if I continue like this. Um, April's put into a cage for being a witch. Uh, Mikey gets separated from the others. Uh, Donnie, Leo, and Ralph go to find April. Then they somehow end up at the same place that she's at because, um, who knows? And, um, they escape, they make it, and now the village is on fire. I feel like I'm going insane. Am, am, am I dumb? That kid could have just crawled right through the window. It's open, it's held by two planks, and he's calling for help? Help yourself out. I mean, come on. I know, it's just, you try to save a kid, but just crawl out the f window. Uh, a lot more of back and forth and nothing going on, and we end up at this place. Okay, those guys just ran straight into the wall. No kick needed at all. That's that's an elbow, that's not a kick. A lot of this movie's sound effects for fighting scenes are very generic sounding and stuff you've heard in probably tons and tons of movies. But what if we changed the sound effects to modern day sound effects that we all know? Hey! Hey! Okay, after a whole movie of just confusion and just a whole lot of nothing, you want to see the worst ending to a villain trope probably ever? There wasn't even a splash, man. Come on, you couldn't just add a little splash. He just disappears out of existence. Okay, okay, they all make it back. Happiness, yes, creepy faces for everyone. And that was it. That was the very creepy, very weird movie of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from 1993. 
Happy birthday, you piece of sh**. Hey, uh, thank you for watching. If you liked what you enjoyed, just hit that like button, I guess. And if you want to subscribe, do it. It's always free, and you could unsubscribe after. Please don't. I've got way more movies to cover in the future, and tons and tons of ideas for videos. So stay tuned for that. Happy birthday to me, and thank you if you said happy birthday too. Um, if you excuse me, I'm gonna go eat my Funfetti cake. And no, not just one piece at a time. I'm gonna shove my face into the middle of it.